So this week I have a little bit of marine biology show and tell. I went scuba diving this morning and while I promise there will be footage from that at some point soon, today I needed to focus a little bit more on the actual diving than I could on filming. But I saw a lot of really cool uh, northeastern ocean animals out there. I went diving off of a beach in Rockport, Massachusetts. And so I saw a flounder and I picked up some hermit crabs and some rock crabs and there were some little lobsters swimming around and it was all very, very cool. There was a skate too that my instructor picked up. Um, but as we were swimming back to shore, my instructor, you know, stopped me and dug around in the, you know, uh, seaweed a little bit and he pulled something out and he handed it to me. And what he handed me was a sand dollar. Now sand dollars are pretty cool. They're from the family Echinodermata. Um, so it's an echinoderm and Echinodermata comes from the Latin for spiny skin or hedgehog skin. And that's because like some of their other family members, things like sea stars and sea urchins, they have spines on their skin. Now echinoderms have a lot of different things in common. So uh, as you can tell on this sand dollar, they're radially symmetric and often uh, they're in sort of a five point star shaped symmetry. So you can see that on the center of the sand dollar. You can see that in a sea star, which has five arms. You can also see that on a sea urchin. If you look at the coloration on a sea urchin, you can often see that there are sort of five points to its radial symmetry. Now this sand dollar is no longer alive, but a live one would actually be covered in spines as well. They're very soft spines. It's sort of a velvety coloring, which depending on the species can be sort of green or brown or purple or blue. So they do, uh, like their sea star and sea urchin cousins, have that sort of spiny covering. Echinoderms can be found in all different areas of the ocean and sand dollars often like to be in sort of muddy, sandy areas and so they will often burrow into the sand or sort of slowly creep on through it. Now the sand dollar's mouth is right in the middle. It's this hole right in the middle here. And so the bottom of the sand dollar will actually have sort of sticky tube feet on it. So it'll pick up little pieces of food and it'll move it into this mouth right in the center. Now this, what I'm holding right here, is actually not a shell. So this is actually the skeleton of the sand dollar. Um, it's called a test in an echinoderm. So this is the sand dollar test. Uh, so it's its skeleton and it's made out of calcium carbonate. Now what I thought was really cool was this second hole on the bottom of the sand dollar. Now I don't know what this is. I'm purely speculating, but I think that this is the reason why the sand dollar died. So it's definitely not another mouth. It's definitely something that happened uh, to this test. And so I think that what this is, is actually a moon snail hole. So moon snails are these really big snails. Um, their shell is about the size of my fist and they'll have the big foot or body underneath. And what they'll do is they'll actually drill a hole into something like a clam or a slipper shell and they'll insert through that hole digestive enzymes into the body of the animal. And so they'll sort of partially digest the animal and then suck it back in into the moon snail mouth. And so I think that this could possibly be a moon snail hole. Now I've never heard of moon snails uh, eating sand dollars before. And so, I don't know, give me your guess. Do you have another idea of what that little second hole could be? I think it might be the reason why this guy died. And I think it might just be a moon snail hole, but I'm not sure. So just a little bit of show and tell from the science that popped up in my daily life. Go forth, do science.